Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about rational equations. Before I get started, I want to make it clear that I'm proceeding with this video under the assumption that you've watched my video on linear equations. I use the same kind of terminology, setup, and methodology for solving problems, so if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check that out. The easiest way to think of a rational equation is an equation that involves fractions where you have x in the denominator. Really the main goal is to take a rational equation and do some manipulations so that you end up with a linear equation. Then solving for x becomes a simpler process. To start, we'll look at the equation 1 over x equals 2. To clear x from the denominator, what we can do is multiply both sides by x. So on the left hand side, x over x will cancel out, and then on the right hand side, we'll end up with 2x. It looks something like this. So our revised equation is 1 equals to 2x, which is linear. Now we can divide both sides by 2 and get a solution of x equals to 1 half. Throughout this process, we've done nothing really new here. We're using the same properties that we use for rational equations, and we're seeing that we can use those exact properties with x and not just numbers. So the whole goal with a rational equation is to clear x's from the denominator so that you end up with something linear, and then you just solve for x. Let's go through some more involved examples. Solve 2 over x equals 3 plus 1 over x. So on the left and right hand sides, we have x's appearing in denominators, but I'm going to focus on the left hand side for now. Multiply both sides by x, and then observe the following simplification. We end up with the equation 2 equals 2 3 times x plus 1. I chose to do this because on my left hand side, x times 2 over x will simplify down to 2, and then my right hand side simplifies down to something that is also linear. So, we have a linear equation, now all we need to do is isolate x. I can start by subtracting 1 from both sides to get the revised equation 1 minus 3x, and then I can divide through by 3 to get a solution of x equals to 1 third. So my goal was succeeded. Remember, what I'm trying to do is clear all x's from denominators, and I've done so by multiplying through by x in that first step. Let's look at some harder examples. Consider the equation 2 over 1 plus x plus one-third equals two. My left-hand side has a lot going on here, so I should think about simplifying it before I proceed. By simplifying, I mean add the fractions together. To do this, I need to find a common denominator. Notice that if I multiply two over one plus x by three over three, and one-third by x plus one over x plus one, and this will simplify in the following way. Now that I have common denominators, I can simply add the fractions on the left hand side together like so. So now I have the revised equation 7x over 3 times the quantity 1 plus x equals 2. So the right hand side didn't change any. The only thing I've done is simplify the left hand side. So all I have on the left hand side is one fraction, which means I'm good to clear out denominators. And to do that, all I'm going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator of the left hand side, namely, 3 times 1 plus x. I'm doing this because then 3 times 1 plus x will cancel out of the denominator on the left hand side. After this cancellation takes place, we're left only with the numerator of the left hand side, and we get the revised equation 7x equals 6 times the quantity 1 plus x. The 6 is coming from the 2 times 3 that takes place on the right hand side. Once I distribute the 6 on the right hand side, I have a linear equation. So to solve for x, I can subtract 6 from both sides, and I can subtract x from both sides. This gives me a revised equation of 1 equals to 5x, so I divide both sides by 5 to get a solution of x equals 1 fifth. To recap this problem, looking back at the beginning, it's a lot easier to clear denominators if my entire left-hand side has only one denominator to worry about. That's why I added the fractions together, simplified, so the only denominator I need to pay attention to was the 3 times quantity 1 plus x. Once I finished that, I ended up with a linear equation, and then solving for x became a familiar process. For our last example today, we'll solve the equation 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 equals 3 over x squared minus 1. Just like in the previous slide, I have a sum of fractions on the left hand side, so to simplify that, I'll simply add the fractions together. Doing so will mean that I have exactly one denominator to worry about on the left-hand side, and I already have one denominator to worry about on the right-hand side, which is what we want. 
So I'll add the fractions on the left-hand side together in the following way. Multiplying by these quantities will give us a common denominator. The left-hand side will simplify to 2x over x minus 1 times x plus 1. The math that is happening on the left-hand side is completely dependent on how we find common denominators or fractions. We can take this simplification a step further by foiling out the denominator x minus 1 times x plus 1. Once we foil this out, we get the revised equation 2x over x squared plus x minus x minus 1 equals 3 over x squared minus 1. Simplify the left-hand denominator again to get the revised equation 2x over x squared minus 1 equals 3 over x squared minus 1. This problem ended up working out pretty nicely because their denominators on the left-hand side and the right-hand side match. Therefore, we multiply both sides of the equation by the quantity x squared minus 1. Working through these cancellations, we get a revised equation of 2x equals to 3, which will give us a final solution of x equals to 3 over 2. So we'll finish off with a different kind of example. We're going to solve the equation quantity 1 minus 6 over x squared minus 9 times quantity 1 minus 6 over x plus 20 equals to 0. So we've got the term 1 minus 6 over x showing up multiple times. So I'll make use of this trick that is known as u substitution. I'm going to let u stand in for the value 1 minus 6 over x. Once I make this substitution, I get the revised quadratic equation u squared minus 9u plus 20 is equal to 0. Again, this is called substitution or u substitution. Both names are pretty common, but basically what I'm doing is taking something that looks complicated and replacing it with a single letter. That way it's easier to handle. Moving forward, we simply just have a quadratic equation, which we can solve by factoring, and then we find that u is equal to 5 or u is equal to 4 as our solution set. But the thing is we're not quite done. We have that u is equal to 1 minus 6 over x, so we have to take each of these solutions and set it equal to 1 minus 6 over x and then solve for x in each individual case. I'll first set 5 equal to 1 minus 6 over x, and I notice that as I solve for x, I end up with an answer of x equals to negative 3 halves. If I do this with 4, I set 4 equal to 1 minus 6 over x, and when I solve for x, I get that x is equal to negative 2. Therefore, my solution set is negative 3 halves and negative 2, and we're done.